All right, hello guys. Uh, be a little bit different video. Now, everybody teaches to pull through the shot kind of like this on target. Pull, 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 pull. But what if you want to shoot another way? What if you want to shoot like you currently do or like most bow hunters do with a wrist strap release and you just checked out this finger action and you just smashed that release. Is that entirely bad? Everyone says it's bad. But in this video, I want to talk about maybe that's not entirely bad. Maybe the things that are bad that come with it. Okay, guys, I'm not going to lie. Totally smashing that trigger for like the first time in years for myself probably gave me just a little bit of anxiety just to do that to illustrate it on the video. But is smashing or punching the trigger like uh, pretty commonly said, is that entirely bad? I want to say no, it's not entirely bad because there are examples of uh, a very small percentage of professional archers that can do that very successfully and at such a very high level but you know if you kind of take the the whole spectrum of archers out there it's a really small percentage that can do that and I don't think the act of punching is bad um, and, and if you've got the accuracy or the, or the results that you want with that certainly don't change it don't let me tell you anything but if you're struggling with that I want to explain two reasons why maybe that action is leading to other things that is causing you some inaccuracy and frustration in this video. Okay, now the first one is, I'm gonna go with the hardest one first and then the easiest one later and then hopefully maybe some tips that can help you get a little better um, with the easier issue. But the hardest one is, is the mental issue. The mental issue of being able to smash on that trigger when you want to kind of consciously do it. and. For some people, like I explained earlier, for some pro archers, it's super easy to do, but for a good majority of people, it comes with sort of an anxiety that you know a shot is gonna come, you know, you know something is about to happen, and it, it can create some anticipation issues. Um, I would kind of liken this to you ever had someone, you know, shooting a rifle, and you know, before the gun fires, they kind of anticipate the recoil or they flinch. And it's because they're kind of bracing themselves for that, that explosion or for that motion. They're anticipating it happening. And when you're in archery and you're <laughs> under tension and you get an anticipation, well, the bow is pulling back on you and, it, and if you ain't pulling back on that bow to hold it back steady, um, it can get pretty catastrophic so you get the folks that you know they might do the, the pump fake or the jerk or everything before they smash that trigger and it one it could be a physical loss of of pressure or tension but the other thing is it could be very mental in that they're anticipating that bow going off and their body is just getting kind of lazy and not pulling anymore wanting to be steady and still where typically even for someone that punches a trigger successfully they still need to hold that structure back which I'll get into later the physical aspect of it but mentally um, they kind of just get lazy mentally not doing their thing and only kind of thinking about lining up the sights and then smashing that trigger sort of like um, they think if they think it's like shooting a rifle which you could be fairly accurate doing that archery however I would note that you know in a rifle the stock the barrel the, the scope all of that is in one contained unit it's not moving um, relative to each other. The only thing that moves is you activating the trigger or you holding the rifle. But in the case of archery, your body drawing the bow back is part of the structure of the piece of equipment. So if your body isn't the same, say you're mentally getting lazy and you're doing things differently, you're focusing on kind of the wrong things, um, it's going to cause inaccuracies and it's going to cause misses downrange. So um, that's kind of the mental part is it, it may just be I don't know how to explain it, a little too easy. Like the mind, the human mind wants to do things more efficiently and faster and take shortcuts. Um, I don't know if people know, know what that means, but you know how people, when they read a sentence and they kind of, if you could, you could misplace a few letters in the writing or something like that, but they still can get the sentence and understand what it means is because the mind is filling in the blank, so to speak, or getting lazy, not reading word for word for word. So mentally, we're just getting more efficient, skipping steps, and the same thing happens when, say, triggering the shot is just so easy, right? Just smash it. You don't have to do anything else like maintain form or whatever. Just do it. And um, 
that efficiency and that ease over time of doing it over and over can lead to some pretty bad mental habits. So that's the hard one to address and it'll take a lot of time. But let me explain the easier one, which would be the physical aspect of it. All right, so let me explain the physical aspect of it. The physical aspect, I'm gonna draw the bow and try to try to explain it while I'm talking. So, um, <clears throat> drawing back and coming to anchor, you can kind of see that how I explain all in the mental aspect that you, your body, you are part of the bow. The bow, it's not contained all by itself. So if you, if as an archer physically, you can just smash on that trigger and get this arrow off efficiently instead of have to think about constantly maintaining this pressure on the back of the bow you're gonna get lazy and you're gonna begin to creep forward and relax and relax and people relax and then you get that right you get this this little jigamaru because they're losing pressure losing pressure whether it's whether it's by mental relaxation like they're just getting lax mentally they're not in it or whether they're just their body is just not focusing on the right things of keeping tension in the back and you know I admit I, I can I see this a lot when I shoot 3d with with people who are um, who punch triggers that they'll typically start out and this may be you they'll typically start out the course very good shooting great scores 12 rings 10s or whatever and then as the day goes on as they keep punching away they begin to want to aim the bow better and not focus on maintaining their structure so what happens is they'll aim better smash that trigger and they'll just miss by a little bit here and there here and there like that arrow won't be going right behind the pin and you're like kind of they're kind of scratching their heads like how come you know and so they aim a little better and when they aim a little better sometimes they even lose more tension in the shot and then you may see the dreaded you know the jerk or whatever where they go oh wow i wasn't holding the bow back now if you <laughs> do that to a bow where you know, say my holding weight at anchor is 14 pounds and I shoot it at 16 generally. Say I just hold 15 on another one, 14. Maybe I can even creep a little more, 13 pounds or something before the, the cams wanna roll forward. If you shoot inconsistently against that back wall, generally, unless, you know, most bows, no matter how well you aim it, as you get further, this will get greater. No matter how well you aim it, it'll, that arrow will go off because you're not consistently holding it back with the same pressure and part of that structure. So the physical one, if you want to punch away, <laughs> is the easiest one to fix. And that is to really, you know, as I explained, someone who went through the course and getting later is to not get lax on holding that bow back. So <clears throat> what I mean by that is when you're at full draw and you're aiming and, and you're aiming, always keep at least some part of your mind or somewhere in your mind you're going to maintain pressure on the back wall and when you go to that trigger you're going to keep pulling on that back wall and then you can punch it if you want right that was hard for me to do <laughs> but uh, but main thing you maintain that structure because if that structure gets inconsistent or softer or harder or softer depending on you know where you are in the course or when you're hunting under pressure or whatever it is it's gonna cause inconsistencies and misses. Maybe not so much when you're really close, but as you step further out, 40 plus yards or something like that, you're gonna typically get left and rights. Or when you decrease in that back pressure, you'll probably shoot out the top of the bow, like it'll shoot like that. Like, um, I don't know, it's just a, my experience in, in having shot bows that kind of weak, uh, doing some weak shots like that. So reiterating again, just because I wanna hone this in for, somebody who's struggling with this and it can definitely probably improve people who, who, who just want to who still want to punch a trigger you know it's very if you're punching away for a long time it's very difficult to learn a pull through kind of shot with a silverback or a tension activated kind of release and you know maybe you got the results that you want out in the field or on on the range good enough right as long as you're having fun just keep doing whatever you're doing but this could just make you a little better if you experience that loss of tension so um, I'll do it one more time when you draw back and you anchor um, the other thing too is don't take a whole lot of time to get on that target and go the longer you hold the more your muscles and your pressure breaks down so um, definitely as you're getting into the shot you want to pull back make sure you got tension on the boat and then you can go ahead and trigger it if you want so just keep that tension 
it sometimes get difficult to do because kind of holding still while keep pulling is very counterintuitive but hopefully um, that's why people learn tension activated shots because they learn kind of subconsciously how to use building pressure to make the pin stop and that's how I shoot but you can also learn it with this build pressure on their back wall make that pin stop you can hit that trigger and you'll just be more accurate doing that okay so before I end this video I want to give you one more thing and that's uh, maybe another way to activate this this release now I was just showing folks, you know, how most people just trigger it. They just smash, line up the sights and smash that trigger. Just make sure you're constantly maintaining structure and, and pulling back on the bow. But if you, you can still shoot these releases with uh, back tension, so to speak, or with building pressure. And it would have to be done generally with a trigger that's set a little heavier. Um, a lot of people that like to smash on the trigger, they'll set it probably really light and just kind of tap it real fast and get it off quick and that works for you that works for you but if you're somebody that wants to try maybe something a little different or try to force yourself to maintain tension to fire um and, and then next figure release uh, what i would say is set it a little heavier now this is a scott silverhorn with the with the roller bearing it's not a very great model for setting heavy it this is set as heavy as it can go and it's still going to be very too light for me to explain this if i had to um, give a suggestion maybe look at like some of the carter uh, releases that have a, more of a sear engagement than a roller sear like this um, that you can set a bit heavier but i don't have one of those i sold those because i'll never go back to a wrist strap release but uh, for the purpose of this video i'll try to demonstrate it here so basically if you would set a little heavier and really get your finger wrapped around it um hopefully it could show up but uh you'd wrap it around at least within the first knuckle or the second knuckle of your finger that would be between these two lines on your on your pointer finger so i'm going to try to make a shot like that um, so here i am and i'm wrapping it around you can kind of see this uh it's a little bit past my first knuckle on my finger and let me make sure i don't miss the target here but all I'm gonna do is just keep pulling, 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 pulling to the fires. Now it was very light. I wasn't able to put a lot of pressure on it um, and then pull, which would have been ideal. But um, you know, hopefully that kind of uh, explains the idea of what I'm trying to do here. All right, so that's a video on some tips and tricks with using an index finger. So, like I said at the beginning, if you're great with the results you're, you're having punching away then by all means punch away archery is supposed to be fun have fun with it hopefully that helps a little bit and um, if you guys want me to talk about anything different or new leave it in the comments below i check all the comments and um, hopefully i get uh, enough comments that i can check them all at some point but right now i check them all so um till i see you guys on the next one hopefully that helps and aloha guys bye bye